Hello and welcome back. Today, I have a quick video showing you how I got a near perfect level on the bed of my SV06 without changing much of anything. I learned this trick from Teaching Tech, so I'll leave a link to his video in the description. But before I jump into it, there is one caveat. If you print on both sides of your PEI build plate, the textured side and the smooth side, this is going to make one side unusable. I personally have two of these steel beds. I bought this one years ago for my Ender 3, and if I really needed another one, I found another double-sided one for the Ender 3 for about $20 on Amazon. Several of the Ender series printers use the same size bed as the SV06, so if I looked around I could probably find one even cheaper that is probably just smooth PEI on one side and nothing on the other. Okay, moving forward, I opened up Pronterface and made sure the correct USB port is selected for my printer. I found out the correct port by right-clicking on the Windows Start Menu icon, then clicking on Device Manager. Once that opened, I clicked the little arrow next to Ports to drop down the menu. Then I plugged my printer into the USB port, and voila, USB COM3 pops up. So back in Pronterface, I chose COM3 from the drop-down menu. And then I made sure the baud rate was 115200, because that's what most printers are. And yours likely is as well. Then I just click Connect. Once it was showing the printer was connected, I typed G28 to home the printer. When it was done homing, I typed G29 to run the bed level. After the printer finished leveling, it gave me this list of numbers from each point that was probed. This is my bed mesh. I copied all of those numbers and went to this website and pasted my results. Once I clicked the visualize button, I was presented with a visual of my bed mesh. Now I can use this to see where I need to raise or lower the bed. To be fair, I can just use the numbers without the visualizer. My goal is to make all the points no more than plus or minus .050. And as you can see here with my first run, I have some on the corners that are way out. There's one that's negative .226, and the farthest out seems to be a negative .340, which is this dark blue area here as shown in the color chart. I can also hover the mouse over any spot to see what the probe number is too. Also, in this case, directly between red and orange is the good range. I've noticed this does change. I wish it would just be green is good, and beyond that is bad. As you'll see in my later tests, that line between orange and red for zero is going to end up changing. In one example, it's just red. Red is zero. So if you plan to use this, just be wary of that. You always want to check what zero is. Okay, so back to leveling. The first thing I checked was that all five of the screws under the build plate were just tight enough. Not too loose, not too tight. Then I ran the bed level again to see if that affected any of my numbers. If any of these are loose, tightening them down should help with any high spots. Once I got more numbers, I checked the visualizer for the low spots and grabbed a roll of Kapton tape. Kapton tape is heat resistant, so it shouldn't be failing under normal printing temperatures. You can get more than enough in a thinner roll for under $10 on Amazon but I already had this wide roll from years ago that I used with an old printer. So I ended up just cutting strips out of it and stuck them to the bottom of the build plate where the low spots were. I would put one strip in the low spots, then run the bed level in pronter face, then input that into the visualizer and add strips as needed. It's also important to remember that every time before you run a bed level, you'll want to home the printer, G28 and then G29. I did this like three or four times before my mesh eventually ended up looking like this. So that's it. It's that simple. Like I said, I'll lose the ability to print on the back side of the plate, but I don't do that often enough to be bothered. And as I also mentioned, I could just grab another smooth PEI build plate if I needed it. Alright, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up, and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in, catch you in the next one, and as always, have the best day ever.